just let me know when you start recording okay so yeah recording. just started okay uh, so good afternoon and a very warm welcome to all our panelists and all our viewers today uh, this is our first edition of hope school hope schooling by why waste and the global shapers bangalore so before we begin we'll just start off with a small video and post that we'll introduce our panelists and move on to our panel discussion davita if you could present yeah sure thank you tell me the one about the virus again then i'll get it back to my boy you're growing weary sleepy thoughts about your head please that one's my favorite i promise just what's more okay snuggle down my boy though i know you know full well the story starts before then in a world i once would dwell it was a world of waste and wonder of poverty and plenty back before we understood why hindsight's 2020 you see the people came up with companies to trade across all lands but they swelled and got much bigger than we ever could have planned we'd always had our wants but now it got so quick you could have anything you dreamed of in a day and with a click we noticed families had stopped talking that's not to say they never spoke but the meaning must have melted and the work life balance broke the children's eyes grew square and every toddler had a phone they filtered out the imperfections but amidst the noise they felt alone and every day the skies grew thicker so you couldn't see the stars so we flew in planes to find them while down below we filled our cars we drive around all day in circles we'd forgotten how to run we swapped the grass for tarmac shrunk the parks till there were none we filled the sea with plastic because our waste was never capped until each day when you went fishing you'd pull them out already wrapped and while we drank and smoked and gambled our leaders taught us why it's best to not upset the lobbies convenient But then in 2020 the new virus came our way the governments reacted and told us all to hide away while we all were hidden amidst the fear and all the while people dusted off their instincts and remembered how to smile they started clapping to say thank you and calling up their mums and while the car keys gathered dust they would look forward to their runs and with the skies less full of voyages the earth began to breathe and the beaches bore new wildlife that scuttled off into the sea some people started dancing some were singing some were baking we'd grown so used to bad news but so good news was in the making and so when we found the cure and were allowed to go outside we all preferred the world we found the one we left behind old habits became extinct they made way for the new and every simple act of kindness was now given its due but why did it take a virus to bring the people back together sometimes you've got to get sick a boy before you start feeling better now lie down and dream of tomorrow and all the things that we can do and who knows if you dream hard enough maybe some of them will come true we now call it the great realization and yes since then there have been many but that's the story of how it started and why hindsight's 2020 if you look at the camera all right over to you sanjana yes thank you so much garvita i think that was a beautiful video and that leads us to the theme of our today's webinar before that i would just like to um, brief you about what hope schooling is hope schooling was started by why waste to keep people motivated and happy during this difficult times during this pandemic so for our first edition today we are collaborating with global shapers bangalore and uh, bare necessities so before that before we introduce our panelists i would like to take a moment to thank all our covid warriors the doctors the hospital staff the nursing staff 
our policemen, all of them who are giving us food and the essentials, a big thanks to all of them for fighting endlessly in this battle against uh, coronavirus and for keeping us safe. Okay, moving on to our panelists for today, we have four amazing young women from various backgrounds who are here with us today to inspire us, to interact with us and to talk about the theme for today, which is climate change and hope during the time of pandemic. So our first panelist for today is Sahar Mansoor. She is the founder and CEO at Bare Necessities. Bare Necessities is a social enterprise that produces zero waste personal and lifestyle products and was titled as one of the top five handcrafted in India brands by Harper's Bazaar. She has been recognized by Google India, NDTV and MTV India. She's called a Swatch Warrior and also named the most inspiring Indian of the year in 2017. She became a climate reality leader and is also a climate launchpad mentor and a global shaper at World Economic Forum. Welcome Sahar. Thank you for having me, Sandana. Thank you for making me sound way cooler than I actually am. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, our next panelist is Sanjana Kalesh, who calls herself a climate optimist and is a legal professional working as an in-house counsel for a reputed company in Bangalore. She has experience of dealing with civil and criminal litigation, environment law and climate justice, gender equity, human rights, and many more. She heads the Environment and Climate Action at Global Shapers Bangalore. She has been recommended by Services Selection Board to join the Indian Army twice in 2017. She has completed a project titled Education for Sustainable Development at World Federation of United Nations Associations. She is also a professional Yakshagana artist and has performed at various reputed platforms. Welcome, Sanjana. Thank you, Sanjana. Our next panelist, we have Gayatri Reddy. She is the founder of Create Foundation. Create is a social enterprise that focuses on identifying solutions to Bangalore's rapid urbanization impact with regard to infrastructure and water conservation. Create spreads awareness towards need for urban planning and development. Gayatri is also a member at Global Shapers Bangalore and works towards environment awareness. A very warm welcome, Gayatri. Thank you, Sanjana. Our last panelist for today is Richa. She is the Chief Marketing Officer at YWaste and the co-founder of the Changemaker Society. Changemaker Society is a group of like-minded students eager to maintain clean and sustainable campuses. They have successfully conducted zero-waste cultural fests and food carnivals in their college at PES University, Bangalore. India's first college to do so. Richa is a third year computer science student at PES University and she oversees marketing decisions at YWaste. She has done a senior diploma in Kathak and is also a theater artist. A very warm welcome to you too, Richa. Thank you so much, Sanjana. Okay, and a little about me, I'm uh, Sanjana Shekhar. I'm the chief networking officer and HR head at YWaste. A little brief about YWaste. YWaste is uh, uh, the biggest youth-led organization in India focusing towards water conservation. It was founded by Garvata Gulati when she was just 15. And we focus on uh, protecting and conserving uh, water. And we started the initiative of the Glass Half Full. And we have over 2 lakh restaurants under NRAI collaborating with us. So we have Garvita here with us today. Thank you for joining us, Garvita. Uh, so before we begin our panel discussion, a small request to all our viewers, please uh, keep your audio and video off so that we can do this smoothly and we'll just start off with our panel discussion. Okay, so we know that right now we are going through a really difficult time of pandemic. So my first question to all our panelists would be, since industries have been shut down temporarily, and the human caused emissions have been greatly reduced. We see that our skies are clearer, the water bodies are cleaner, and the earth seems to be finally healing. And we see that our ecosystem is finally thriving. So, according to you, do you think this pandemic has 
helped us in the fight against climate crisis? And will we have to fight even stronger post COVID? So any of the panelists can start. Uh, we can start with Seher. Sure. Um, I think it's very encouraging to see that we can see, you know, our Himalayas uh, for the first time in 30 years. Um, smog is the lowest level it's ever been in Delhi in 20 years. Um, you know, the dolphins have returned, the uh, turtles have returned. I think all of this is really positive trends for us to see. Um, so I think also on carbon emissions, we are doing really well, uh, dramatically. But um, it's also noteworthy to say that we are producing way more waste than we were pre-COVID and that's largely because of the amount of packaged food and also the amount of temporary kind of single-use uh, disposable masks that are being used extensively right now um, and also the sheer amount of medical waste that we are producing has exponentially increased. Um, so I think it's a uh, time that we really need to reset and kind of be mindful of um, all of our actions and all of our impact, whether it is social, environmental, economic, um, and all of our actions and what kind of the repercussions are on all of these fronts. Um, and I think there are really easy ways in which we can obviously reduce our own waste and be more mindful of our lifestyle. Um, so yeah, that's a brief kind of take. Thank you so much, Seher. Um, Sanjana, would you like to add something to that? Sure. Um, I think Sahir was very right. Uh, so talking about Bangalore itself, you know, we can, I have been able to see at least about five to six new species of birds around my place. i would never seen this and each of them, you know, come out with different sounds and it's really, uh, it's really mesmerizing. And uh, to add, uh, I think Rishabharati River, which runs through Bangalore, only river here, uh, is also seeing a reduction in frothing. Um, the Belindur Lake is also seeing a reduction in frothing. Although experts have diverse opinions about this, uh, it, it's it said that it could be possible because of the reduction in industrial effluents that were being uh, put out into these uh, water bodies. So these are some of uh, you know the. Uh, like the positive news which we are seeing but uh, I think what this pandemic has really done is uh, it, it's on three fronts basically it's firstly increased environmental awareness all of us are clearly able to see uh, that the pollution was man-made and you know the, for, for all the people who've been denying science facts and climate facts especially um, I think now is the time for all of us environmentalists especially it's a small win for us that we can now tell them that uh, although this year is like an anomaly in, in the history of climate crisis, uh, although we cannot take the readings from here, uh, like, you know, as uh, uh, to, to re uh, totally rely upon the results of uh, climate effects, but we can still say that this year uh, is able to show us that all the pollution that was caused was man-made. Right, so that is something which all of us are clearly able to see. Another thing which uh, we can really see around here is uh, people have started consuming mindfully, even if it's to a certain extent. I can see the Kirana shops, the local Kirana shops, the vegetable pe um, uh, like uh, sellers on cart, like in front of my house, coming back. So these are some of the trends which are actually good for us. And I see that people are taking their own bags, you know, because of the fear of getting plastic from outside. They're carrying their own bags to get uh, fruits, vegetables, and grocery. So this is a plus again. So at least to some extent, they've started thinking uh, uh, mindfully. But like uh, Sarah mentioned, yeah, definitely medical waste is a huge thing which we need to start dealing with. And I cannot tell you how happy I feel when I think about all the takeaways like all the plastic cups and straws that have been uh, put out of the market for now. I just feel so happy about it. So that is something. And uh, another thing, very striking uh, uh, feature uh, this pandemic has shown us is that the inequality that exists in the world, right? So we now we are clearly able to see that when a pandemic hits or when a crisis hits, it is the inequal, uh, it, is, it is the vulnerable people who get hit the most. So it's going to be the same with climate crisis. When physical events hit, environmentally and economically, we're going, to, uh, we're going to see significant changes and uh, the sufferers are mostly going to be the vulnerable people. So these are some of the things which uh, have come to light. Uh, although uh, there are some positives uh, which the pandemic has brought in, so think of ends uh what are we gonna do i think all of this could just come back like all of us will start traveling again and uh now uh people are gonna refuse right sharing of rights as well because of uh, 
you know, the scare of, I don't want to get a disease, I'm too scared about traveling. So I think now's the time to really start creating awareness about uh, making our city a walking city and then, you know, biking more and all of these. So, so I definitely we will have to Im increase our efforts for climate action going forward. Thank you, Sanjana. Uh, Gayatri, would you want to add something onto it? I, I think um, Saher and Sanjana beautifully covered um, what's happening right now. I just want to add further to what they were what they were discussing, what we what the post lockdown world might look like. Um, I think a lot of we are all reading in newspapers that oh, expect a lot of manufacturing to come towards India. India will be manufacturing both for export and local consumption. So I think manufacturing as a sector, we need to understand is, um, is a largely large carbon footprint sort of a sector, right? So we need to anticipate that this is coming while this, while during this lockdown, lockdown, a lot of, um, corporates and companies, small, small companies, small entrepreneurs to big companies have taken time to restructure, to re-strategize how to position themselves once the lockdown is over right when we go back to the new normal um what we need to understand is that we need better better green laws um that is both like it, let's call it clean and green um energy standards i think companies need to integrate that right away when we have time to think about it um because going forward we can't develop the way that the now developed countries develop, you know, the new developing countries have to redefine and replan and restructure how they can sort of grow from here forward. I think that's one thing we need to um, remember. And then other biggest thing that I anticipate post, post this lockdown is that um, when we go back, um, we go back into a new sort of an economic crisis where we're going to see a large, um, although we were already facing poverty and hunger issues, when we go back now, because of the impact that the supply and logistics has caused so far, we will be going back into a more uh, strained economic, um, economic world. So I think climate change may take the back seat if, you know, if we all don't proactively as individuals and uh, organizations come together to keep discussing and keep working on it. I think this is something I wanted to add from my perspective. Thank you, Gayatri. Richa, any views? Yes, I feel like Gayatri, Sanjana and Sahar have covered most of it. But then I feel the pandemic has helped ease the climate crisis because as Sahar said that the dolphins are back in the Gange, the swans are back in Milan and those are sight for sore eyes because being youngsters, these are stories you would hear from your grandparents probably that in our days it used to be like that and now it's like a dream come true for, in fact, for the kids right now. And I feel like being a youth of this country, it's our responsibility to take this change forward because as it is said that India is a youth-led country, I think there are small changes that we can take from our end, which will have a positive impact. And now why I say ease and not fight is because the reason for the climate changes right now is because of no action from human beings, which brings me to Sanjana's point that half of the waste that was generated was mankind because of mankind. So from what we understand is that the climate crisis was a result of an inaction from human beings. So now at this time of crisis, no action from human beings has actually helped Mother Earth heal. So a lot of policy changes in the future from like governments, from companies are required because a lot of webinars and talks are being conducted on how the exit strategy should be for safer climate for employees. So it's highly important to mention how we have to be environmentally sustainable as well at that time because a lot of I think as Sanjana covered, a lot of people will be traveling alone, solo, because they're scared that they'll, you know, that they'll, they'll get the disease. So it's very important that uh, companies also talk about how they can make it a safer environment, like they can promote uh, initiatives like bring your own water bottle, bring your own food, and, uh, you know, uh, buy supplies from local vendors and then cook your food and bring your own uh, dabas back to office. And these are some initiatives that we try taking up even in our college. And to an extent, it was successful. But at this time of crisis, I feel like because people are more scared, I feel it can be easily implemented. 
And something else is the reduced use of AC that has come into picture because people are saying that centralized AC can actually help sustain coronavirus in the environment. And we've been taught from 10th grade saying that hydrofluorocarbons are going to be released into the air if your AC is not serviced time, from time to time. And now it kind of reduces even that. So it's important that each and every company to a certain extent, if uh, now companies are going to open at 33% of employees, that 33% employees are going to come. So it's highly important that they ensure that they only use as much energy as they need. And that also kind of helps us in the fight because now the changes are there. But again, it's imperative that companies will try to sustain themselves because eco economic crisis is real. So it's important that we take greener measures and we use clean energy as we go on in the future. In fact, the air quotient index is, air quality index has definitely reduced a lot. Like as Sahar mentioned, the Himalayas are now visible. Even the Ganga's water has become drinkable after a long time, but it's only in the upstream areas. The downstream areas at Varanasi are still highly polluted because of all the mankind waste that was generated and disposed into the river. So it's very important that you clean, you maintain that. I think the idea is to maintain it. So, I mean, in conclusion, I'd just like to say that it's high time that human beings move from a state of inaction to a state of like a measured action where they weigh their consequences for every step that they take in the future. So that's my take on this. Thank you so much, Richa. I think all of you beautifully put out that we have to an extent fought against climate crisis and this pandemic has helped us. But post this, we need to even fight, continue the fight and make sure show that our planet is stays the same and gets even more greener and better for the future. Okay, so before we move on to the next question, I request all the panelists to put up their uh, social media handles and where they can uh, look into your organizations in the chat uh, whenever uh, you guys get a little free. And uh, we, I request all the viewers to uh, look into these amazing organizations post the webinar. You will get to know a lot about what they're doing and how they are trying to make this world a better place. Okay, thank you. Okay, moving on to our next question to our panelists is, um, how can people at home join their hands in protecting Earth? And what should be our next steps towards sustainability? Uh, we can start with Gayatri. I, I'm, I would like to answer this in like a twofold, um, twofold answer. One, of course, going back to governments and companies, I feel like they should focus on mandatorily putting a green team in place. Um, that even if it's a small organization, if they can appoint a, appoint one person or you know just restructure an existing person to just focus on sustainability and green green impact a little bit. Um, just just to monitor it um that would be um one thing we could do otherwise on a more personal and individual level um i feel like we could continue um, continue to um focus on um like for example a lot of us have cleaned our cupboards during the lockdown so can we recycle and upcycle um some of the products or some of the um, items that we already have um, can we can we start buying or can we you know focus on um, reusable reusable products rather than single use products um, can we be more conscious about our water and electricity consumption i think these these are broadly on individual level we could definitely do more maybe we can all choose by starting with one thing um i think as a community also i suggest if people can come together and um and, you know in their area in their locality or within their offices come up come together about 10 people i think can um, eight to ten people can come together and start maybe a community composting in their area or a community rainwater harvesting pit, right? So I think these are some things that I feel like are really relevant um, going forward for us to keep in mind and um, be more conscious about how we go, go forward from here. Yeah, that's what I have to say. Thank you, Gayatri. Uh, Sanjana, would you want to add something on this? 
I think Sahar will cover all all of the stuff individuals can do. So <laughs> I'm not going to touch upon that. Uh, I'm just going to say uh, that this is the time when governments, you know, young people, citizens, organizations need to build the movement for climate action uh, and raise awareness. Uh, we have enough time and opportunity now, so we need to use it because uh, now is a time when, you know, the climate crisis, climate action could take a backseat, at least for a year or two. There is a high possibility of that. And if that happens, it's going to be highly devastating for us because we have only up to 10 years, you know, uh, according to all the reports, uh, up to 2030 to deal with this immediately. We, we, we've just left with uh, like 10 to 25 percent of carbon emissions, uh, carbon capacity. So that's all we have. So we, we really need to build awareness from now. And uh, like, uh, secondly, we, we will have to kind of try and adapt to the uh, lifestyle and behavioral changes that are uh, coming through already, like Richa mentioned. This is the time we need to start to use that. And since we spend a lot of time at home and this is going to be, uh, uh, this is going to be the norm for some time at least. It's very easy for us to start, uh, you know, uh, switching to sustainable options, things which are available at home, uh, which don't need to particularly have uh, 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 be, ma be made of packaged items or uh, Sahir will tell us more about that. So, yeah, I think making these small switches, this is the time when we need to start doing that and build it into our habits and lifestyle. Thank you. Seher, uh, would you want to add on? Yes, I went ahead and grabbed a bunch of my uh, props as well. I guess the single best thing we can do is segregate our waste and compost all of our food waste. And you can start composting from home like super easily now if you have a matka, if you have terracotta pot, if you even have like an old plastic uh, a tub um, or a bucket, you just need to kind of take a sharp object, poke some holes in it, uh, so in order for the soil to aerate. And additionally, just start with a dry layer and then a wet layer. A dry layer is anything like um, cocoa peat, coconut, uh, you know, leaves of uh, dried leaves that are crushed, cardboard, or even just um, like remix powder. And then put all your organic waste, which is just your orange peels or uh, banana peels, any organic waste that your kitchen is producing. And by doing so, you can reduce 60% of your waste from even stepping out of your house, um, which is so, so significant, if not more. 60 is, I think, a more conservative estimate. Um, so this is the single best thing we can do. The other thing is just lifestyle choices. I think the first thing that we all do when we wake up in the morning is presumably brush our teeth. We can just swap that out to use a compostable bamboo toothbrush or a miswak stick or a neem stick. Um, even if you don't have any of these, you can just use coconut oil. They've been using it from ancient Ayurveda and it has amazing, amazing benefits um, that basically massage your gums and purify and take out all of the bacteria. So I highly, highly recommend. I think just, you know, if we go back to work as well, I think we've already kind of covered this, but carrying our own stuff, um, just putting it in our bag. It's not going to occupy much space, whether it's our tiffin or our water bottles. Um, I think that it, it, we can't underestimate the impact that carrying our own products actually has. Uh, because on an average, of course, a plastic bottle will take anywhere from 200 to 700 years to start decomposing. And it never really fully does. It just breaks into tiny and tiny smaller pieces of plastic, which are called microplastic, which line up in, of course, the food chain and perhaps the food that you and I consume. Um, so, you know, whether even if you're having Nadil Pani, say, say you don't want the straw um, or carry your own straw, there's bamboo straws or stainless steel straws or just water it simply. Um, and, you know, those are kind of quick, easy tips and tricks. The other thing is, of course, sustainable menstruation. There are a lot of women on this uh, webinar and, um, you know, Menstrual cups, they've been using it since the 1920s with absolutely no negative health impacts associated with it. Um, they're great alternatives to pads which have about seven to nine plastic bags in it or tampons that have toxic shock syndrome associated with it. Also, cotton is one of the dirtiest um, plants in the world in terms of how uh, pesticide intensive it is. So, um, and also it's often bleached, which obviously drains your body of healthy fluid. So using eco-fem cloth pads or menstrual cups are also great, great ideas. Um, and I think even just, you know, for uh, in the summer, especially we use a lot of wet wipes or uh, women use a lot of wipes to take off their kajal or whatever it might be. But these are just, you know, cotton rounds that you can crochet now since you have so much time on quarantine um, to make yourself. And you can basically just take off, your, you know, cleanse your face, take off your kaja, whatever it might be, and just cut it into small little pieces and put it into your compost when you're done. And you'll just go back to the earth. Um, 
So yeah, these are few easy tips and tricks that we can incorporate into our lifestyle. Um, and by doing so, you can literally avoid um, about 80% of your waste from actually landing up in the oceans and the landfill. Thank you so much, Sahar. That was beautiful. Richa, would you want to add on? I feel like Sahar has covered most of it. So let me just talk about certain uh, initiatives that we have taken from YWSN. So we had launched a module, uh, I think one or two years back on how to save 100 liters of water daily. And I think Sanjana has been a huge role in supporting it and promoting it. So we in fact have a proper full-fledged module on our website, I will share the link. And there are very small changes that you take in your day-to-day -day lives that can impact the earth in a very, very large way. Because I like to say that, you know, save, like do your bit one drop at a time. And that's very important because like small changes, like in, in the morning when you're brushing your teeth, don't leave the tap running. Even if you don't want to switch to a cup, I think a lot of us have been told and we're not aware of how to. Just don't leave the tap running. Only use as much as you need. Maybe at your home, if you have aqua guards, conserve that water and use it to water plants. At least at home, my parents have been doing that for a very long time. I think these are small changes. And I think another part of Sanjana's question was how we could... Uh, you know, our next steps towards sustainability. So I feel our next step towards sustainability, as I had mentioned, we should switch to composting because a lot of landfills are now going to be used for deep burying of a lot of biomedical waste that is generated. And biomedical waste is something that has to be disposed of very efficiently. Otherwise, there are a lot of risks, like three of them I can mention on the fly is like health risks. Like if something is left on your... Uh, like in the open, it can expose you and you have infection risks. And there's also environmental pollution because of the same. So, I mean, these are small changes. And then you can plant your own vegetables. At least my mom does it at home. So even if any vegetable like a coriander or a mint comes with roots, she just plants it in a pot. And uh, later, it actually we're using our own like curry leaves at home because of that. So, I mean, these are small changes. So if we don't have curry leaves right now, because we can't go out as often as we would before, say we need something, I think these are small changes you can adhere to. And as companies are, a lot of companies are adhering to work from home. And if employees do live close by, they can commute by, say, walking, which is very good for your health, very beneficial, and also sustaining the environmental changes that have taken place. And again, they can cycle down to work and not use uh, things that are actually produce emissions into the environment. And again, as I had mentioned that bring your own bottle, bring your own cup. All these things are very important. When I say bottle, don't stick to buying plastic bottles because as I had mentioned, that is extremely harmful. Bring your own steel water bottles. I always carry my steel water bottle. In fact, that is more like a protection shield for me because it's, da it's very heavy. So I can actually like it's it's a safety measure as well for me, and yeah, I think it's it's small changes that you make in your day to day activities, and it's a time that you have right now. You can reflect upon your day to day activities, starting from morning, just maybe in a day, just see like as I had mentioned, when you brush your teeth, or later when you're taking a bath, or wherever you say you use water, and if something is running in the house that you don't need, like your washing machine, I mean, I think the load is going to be lesser even on your washing machine. So I mean, run it like wait, once a day, once in two days, because now you have enough clothes also. You don't have to really go outside and look presentable. You can actually sit back home, enjoy in your pajamas. So it's okay. I mean, I think these are the small changes that you take will actually help us with the sustainability steps of the future. So that's my take on it. Thank you so much, Richa. Um, moving on to another important topic for today, which is mental health. With the current situation, we know that life is at a standstill. Everybody is confined to their house and people are going through a very stressful time right now. So what would be your suggestion to people to keep their spirits high during this pandemic? And how can they take care of their mental health? What would be your tips to them to take care of their mental health? Uh, we can start with Seher, anybody? Sure, that's a great question. Um, I think it's really important to take care of our mind, body and soul during this time because, you know, we're not doing routine things. Perhaps we're not being um, seeing our friends or family. Uh, we're not, you know, uh, meeting people at co-workers, etc. 
and for a lot of extroverts, I know this is a very difficult time. Um, so, you no, know, I think a few things that we can do is um, embracing mindfulness in all actions and all aspects of our life. Um, and also encourage people to do screen free things because we're doing so many things on the screen. We're working on the screen, we're doing webinars on the screen. So I think really, you know, reflect and take some screen free time, whether that means you're cooking a fabulous meal with your loved one or you're making something that is fun and DIY. Uh, I have so many kind of uh, little um, old jars of food that I just made planters all around or old bottles. Um, I think also it's really important to practice some sort of exercise, whether it's yoga or mindfulness. Um, my mom and I practice yoga together, which is like a super fun and bonding thing as well. Uh, because with our schedules, I feel like we can never match the same time. But I think that's been really something that's been fun to do. Um, also, I do have sisters that live um, outside of India and have babies. So we've been kind of, have, we've gotten to a routine. So every breakfast um, time in California, we're like Skyping with my sister and her babies, which is so lovely because I don't think I got to and see them every day uh, kind of so regularly. We had our Sunday kind of face times or whatever. But it's been really fun to kind of, uh, in, in, you know, foster a little relationship even while outside. I think checking on our neighbors has been really fun. Mrs. Singh lives across the door from me. She's a single woman who's a math teacher and is about eight years old. And uh, she couldn't get her, you know, Zoom to work on her phone because her storage was out. So just checking on our neighbors, I think, is something that's just so important. Um, and, uh, you know, I need some bath salts and then I gave something to her. So I think just embracing the slow pace of life, reflecting, see, going at your pace. Um, you know, if you don't feel like working the whole time, just sit outside as far as possible, you know, try and spend, even if you have a little bit of um, concrete or a little bit of anything, plants in your balcony, whatever it might be, try and spend some time outside. I think it's really important um, to help balance and center ourselves. Um, definitely connect and reach out to friends and loved ones uh, because they are our biggest support system, whether or not we physically see them. Um, you know, I've been writing a gratitude journal every day. I write down one thing that I'm happy for, which I think is really um, been uh, super uplifting and great. So um, I also think we've kind of lost the art of writing letters. So I started with the gratitude journal, but now I'm also writing like gratitude letters to a few uh, people that have really kind of impacted my life. Um, and I mean, I'm not sure when I'll send it to them, but I think it's just kind of a good, very cathartic um, process. And uh, I think right now we're all focusing on all things that matter. I mean, stop being into like the rush of everyday grind. We've really got time to slow down and reflect. And maybe in a way, I think the entire world, all of us needed that time to just slow down. Um, so I think it's been a breath of fresh air. Of course, not to underestimate the difficulties um, a lot of people are facing and um, obviously always the underserved and the disenfranchised and the people who don't have the social economic power um, to you know have a roof above their head. So I think I've just been so grateful during this time given um, all the things that we're reading outside and also donating how much ever you possibly can, whether it's your time or your energy towards, um, you know, whether it is donating towards waste pickers, um, or donating to artists, to, donating to you know local artisans who are handcrafting a bunch of our products. Um, I think whatever you can try and give and just be gracious and just kind of uh, just, just give fully. Yeah. Thank you, Sahar. Um, Gayatri, would you want to add on? Yeah, I mean, it's such a great question. Um, a lot of us, um, even when we talk to our friends, they, we all, we are, we're always adding the line that, oh my God, I don't know what to do anymore. Because like we've run out of things we want to do or we thought we, we had this big plan and, um, and then we, we've done most of it or, um, or like, yeah, so we, we really, we really, I, what I would say is mental health is um, serious and um and the solutions are not one size fits all so what may work for your friend may not work for you so um while a lot of my friends are saying oh yeah i'm reading and it's helping me relax and a lot of people i'm meeting they're saying oh i'm like trying to meditate i'm learning to meditate every day and that's been great and so a lot of other people are saying i'm watching a lot of movies and documentaries which is helping me. So, so I think it's such a great time to understand what works for you in terms of relaxation, because it could be cooking and baking or working out. Like Sahih mentioned, a lot of great ideas. So it could be gardening. It could be, it could be anything. But I think the key is to take some time to understand 
hey, what works for me, you know? Um, and then trying to focus, then once you figure out what works for you, you then put it on a schedule and make, make, put that, make that a part of your daily life, you know? Say, I'm going to take 15 minutes to just um, read a book or I'm going to take 15 minutes to like meditate or I'm going to take um, an hour to go like exercise. So these are all great ideas, I think. And it's also really important to know that um, a lot of us are at home and a lot of us are feeling this. So you're not alone in, in what, you're, what you're going through. And when you turn on the news, it is the news channel's responsibility to report what a country is going through as a whole. So the numbers are large, huge, you know. But it's also important that you understand and recognize what's happening in your area, right? Just to, just to get that difference and not start to panic just by looking at the numbers. I think that's one more key thing to understand. News will report it, they have to report it. We may have to know it, but also know that you don't have to watch it every day and stress yourself out. It's okay to shut down and not watch news for a day or two, you know? And that's something that's really important to understand at this time specifically, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Richa, any views? Anything? Yes, I feel like it's a great question because again, being not being able to go to college and meet friends every day has it has been difficult because you're just so used to being around those people all the time. And I feel like I, I'd like to rightly say that while this time is every introvert's dream, it is every extrovert's nightmare because you're just so used to going out and meeting people. But then people have found out like little ways in which they are in touch with their friends and with their families who are not at home with them at the, uh, currently. So uh, like for me, I have worked with a production house and the owner of the production house, he conducted a tambola session where we could join in with our families if we wanted to. And it was a lot of fun because, you know, that spirit of competition, even with the, within your household, with your family, was just so much fun and there's just so much bonding. And we actually made a lot of money for the amount we invested. And all of that is just so much fun. It doesn't feel like you're missing out on much. So just, you know, play games with your families like once a week. Even with my friends, we have like online games. There are a lot of portals right now, like Plateau, the Scribble. So all of us just get on video calls and just play on those portals. And it doesn't feel like you're missing out on much. I think uh, uh, one way we do miss out on, it, at least for me being in college, is like when you're working on certain like projects and everything, you just want it to be a collaborative effort. I feel like a lot of people who are even going to work, especially in like the tech domain and everything, are you know, they, it, it was easier for them to discuss doubts initially, but right now they just have to be in front of the screen. But as I, as I had mentioned, it's very important to take some off screen time for yourself and reflect upon some actions that you probably wanted to do before, but because of uh, time constraints, you weren't able to. Like, for example, in my life, I had almost two, two and a half hours was spent in traveling. And now I have those two, two and a half hours with me. And it depends on how I make use of it. So I've recently like started working out. I, I, there were a lot of times when I would try to get into the habit of it, but I would be so tired because traveling really exhausts you. But right now I'm able to sort of pick up that new skill that you wanted to do. And probably as Gayatri mentioned, include it in your life, like include it in your daily schedule. Maybe like right now, if you're working out for 10 minutes, uh, not 10 minutes, like an hour or so, maybe later just for like a 10 minutes, you know, you can do it. Maybe you can pick up a new skill because you have the time right now and later just stay in touch with it and practice it. And I think that really adds a lot of positivity to your life. And I think life was, we always kept complaining that life is moving at such a fast pace. I'm not able to catch up, but life has actually slowed down right now. It's become relatively slower. So you can actually get a hold of your life. You can do things you weren't able to. And I think, I think that is something that is very important. And as far as mental health is concerned, I feel that this is the right time where you can actually, or I feel like there are a lot of people I personally know who are very afraid to share their mental health condition condition with their families but I think it's very important right now that you're spending so much time with your families they have been there 
with you from childhood till now and hiding such important thing from them is not right you can share it with them they can be, you can be there for one another right now and i think that's something that's very important that's something you should really reflect on making times for things that you weren't able to before and you can do it right now and including it in your schedule later is something i think that is very important at this time of crisis thank you rucha uh, sanjana would you want to add on something yeah just a few quick pointers i think we are living in a vuka world you know highly volatile uh, ambiguous complex and uh, unpredictable so uh, it's very important to be patient with each other firstly and then if you need help please seek professional help the, uh, right now uh, like all of you all mentioned i think it's very different the way each of us uh, react and behave uh, here and the shifts are also very unpredictable so we don't know so it's good to seek professional help and it's okay to do that i'm just going to leave a link to one of just going to leave a link to one of the shapers uh, helpline in the chat box which you can access anytime you want there are a lot more helplines like that and you can also you know speak to doctors if uh, that is going to be uh, something which is going to help you so other than that i think uh, one uh, i think you all have covered the other points so i would just say trying to inculcate all of this and building a routine and sticking to it is something which will help uh, that's one thing and then developing curiosity you know to learn new things as children we always were excited to learn things and uh, you know always explore and stuff i think we've lost that and now is the time to learn new things develop that curiosity and keep it alive uh, now we have different channels of uh, learning so i think uh, now is a good time for that as well uh, other than that i think all of you have covered most of the points so please let just my thank you so much sanjana and thank you for the helpline number 2 uh, it's absolutely true that if you really need help you should seek for it it's not it's not wrong and uh, your mental health comes first before anything else so you should just take care of it i think uh, it was beautifully put out by all of you so for our next question to our panelists so uh, we will be this will all subside soon and we all will have our lives back to normal pretty soon enough and everything will be sorted out so what lessons do you think we should take away from this pandemic into the era post covid uh, richa would you want to take on that yes definitely sanjana i think it's very important and i think it's a very good addition to your previous question as well so i feel like in this time of crisis we've realized how important collaboration is and how everyone is interlinked with each other and one can't sustain without the other like as important as human health is even planet health is as important as that so right now as we take care of ourselves it is highly important that post covid the changes that earth has sustained right now we take that forward and these are some lessons i feel that we should take forward and then as we've learned that i think one very important thing is prevention is definitely better than cure because if you are able to prevent something like a lot of countries the reason they there was such a wide spread of the disease was because they didn't prevent it earlier when they could have and i feel like uh, we have been at a very good state with that and uh, when you see like world leaders itself collaborating and working together uh towards a very uh, united goal of getting rid of the pandemic i think a lot of people have been calling it the world war 3 but i feel like it has been a very collaborative effort and to like call it world war 3 would be very unfair to a lot of other people and i feel like um from our previous question i think it's very important to make time for yourself also occasionally i think that's what you've learned that you have done so many things that have helped you like the me time that you wanted probably before and you said that you know life was moving too fast i think you can make time for those things post pandemic as well and follow certain healthy practices for your own life avoid packaged food as much as much as you can because right now a lot of us have been eating only home cooked food but we had been dependent on eating outside so it's very important to switch mend those ways and practice healthy uh, eating you know just like buy your own vegetables and make we make a quick salad or just make a quick recipe i mean you have the time you can practice it in fact 
and it's very important also to uh, how much time you did spend with your family to not forget all of that post covid just because like life moves on and you know we're back on track it's very important to also inculcate those habits post covid and remember how it used to be i think all these small changes and i think a lot of people are coming with initiatives i i saw something online recently known as i for india so it's basically people are standing up for india and they're saying that how they can do their bit for india at this time of covid so post covid it's very important to take all these habits and move ahead and i think uh, that's a sort of lesson that we should learn from this covid era which we should take into post covid era <laughs> thank you uh, gayatri would you want to add on yeah i guess um you know what richa said was really really nice <laughs> just adding adding to what um she was saying i think what we can take away is that we all have come together to learn um to be more conscious about our food wastes because there was we saw that our bottom line workers did not even have access to basic food like rice and vegetables um um so then we saw a lot of food donation drives um we saw we saw what saw how important it is i think this whole food waste um we should be more conscious of how we eat how much we cook and how um how to like really cook the right amount instead of making too much and then make then that gets spoiled and then we throw it away instead of that we make smaller batches i see that a lot within my family where um like my extended family where they're texting every day saying oh you know what i just realized i can cook a lot less of food and it's just sufficient instead of cooking too much because you know all the working women generally just um you know because of their time constraint they used to cook a lot of food they don't know how much food would be would be needed um so they used to cook and then at the end of the day somebody did not come back home for dinner so then they had to waste that food so now they know they know how to consciously cook um the other big big uh, learning that we all have seen is that we need better healthcare infrastructure um even the developed countries um have seen um their systems fail um thank god for us in our country where we shut down earlier we were more preventive than reactive so that that was such a great move by our country but we saw a lot of infrastructures across the world um failing so i think we should work on like bettering that and creating a better infrastructure um then i know very like um just shout, just thinking of all the entrepreneurs and small businesses um i think the big learning that that has come for them is that it is not just in, enough to build um say offline businesses you know it's also important to equally um balance it out with a little bit of online business because there's a lot of people who went into this lockdown who'll come out um with no jobs or um a lot of cutbacks so i think that's something we should all reflect on very carefully um to see how we can support and sustain our businesses because that losing jobs also leads to impacts on mental health leads to impacts on various other aspects um in this economy that we're going to enter post lockdown so all of this is something i want to shed light on thank you sanjana uh, would you want to add on to gayatri um i think the major lessons have been those of uh, empathy slow living gratitude also hope you know none of us have lost hope uh, we're sure that we're going to come out of this stronger so hope is very important and like gayatri and richa mentioned action also is very important so similar to how countries have been proactively taking action they will also uh, for uh, tackling covid they will also have to start taking action in time for climate crisis so action is something which is very important again and then another very important thing i feel is this resilience um especially all of us youngsters will have to you know develop elasticity to build back ourselves better um, and get back in action so uh, this is going to be a challenge and uh, also very important because we are going to be the ones who are going to inherit the political and uh, economic structures 
from here and we will be dealing with these and to recover from this pandemic is going to take some time and along with that we are also going to face a few more challenges be it climate crisis or relapse of pandemics or could be you know technological shifts a lot of them so it's time we develop resilience and uh, uh, we also start preparing ourselves for it so these are some of the lessons i think which are very important another major uh, lesson is definitely you know always we've been thinking about uh, uh, health in terms of local uh, perspective right now we have, we've really learned that nothing's local everything is global and everything is connected we, we, i think up till now we never thought of healthcare system from a perspective of uh, you know having better healthcare in china or iran would save a lot of lives in america and uh, europe right so this is the time when we need to understand that we we are all globally connected and all of us are equally responsible and so definitely global cooperation and global coordination because it becomes very important so these are some of the major lessons so uh, i feel I think Sahar can add on something. Yes, Miss Sahar. Sahar, you're on mute. Yeah, I just. Sorry, uh, I, those are all really great points. And Fahad on chat says most countries spend a lot of money on military and very less for medical emergencies. And I think this is a time that we all reflect and kind of re-examine and reflect on. just restructure everything that we're currently doing and whether we should be spending more money on social infrastructure whether that school medical um you know strengthening our social um, social system in india or even abroad all policies i think it's a reflective time for us to change our public policy to be a more pro poor more inclusive more equitable more just um and i think those are again values that i think we all can incorporate into our life for irrespective of whatever we're doing um it you know this is just a more of a self reflection but this is going to take a lot of time it's not going to be a two week or a three week or whatever lockdown that you know is going to gradually be extended um i worked at the world health organization in geneva during the ebola outbreak and the last ebola patient just left the hospital six months ago so you know this is a long long time this is and this, this pandemic is even at a different scale uh, than ebola um what really struck me was how united and how quickly countries came together to act Uh, in the healthcare space, which is something that unfortunately I don't see so much in the environmental space, which is I think a reflection. This time should hopefully be um, something that will spur that reflection in terms of collaborating more with one another to actually act on climate action um, with strength, with courage. Um, you know, think beyond just your term of election, which is whatever the two or four years. So stop thinking so short term. Think for long term. I think building resilience is a really, really good one. Whether it's enterprises, I mean, I have a small enterprise, so um, you know, financially, of course, we're terribly hit. But I think um, just building resilience in who you are, which enterprise you're leading, lead with courage, bring those values of whatever you might have to whatever you might do, whether it's in the workplace or otherwise. Um, So I think these are just a few things, but the ones of empathy and kindness is something that I really echo that Anjana already mentioned. Thank you so much, Sahar. I think all of you have beautifully uh, given out your views on what would be our next steps post COVID. Uh, now, since we are running out of time, we have a few more questions by our viewers and those who register with us. So uh, I'll just ask the questions with respect to uh, the panelists closest to that domain, and the rest of the panelists can give their answers in the chat for our viewers to view. Uh, so Vani Ma'am has asked, how can we scale and escalate the awareness to get more people to become waste sensitive? So I think Sahar, you can um, take on that question. Hi, Vani Ma'am. Thank you so much for that. Um, to truly, truly admire and love your work. um thank you for your bio and thanks recipe um i've been making them since i think um making awareness making sustainability fun and accessible is really important making it a relevant topic showing that actually your actions have so much impact if you were to basically use a menstrual cup you would basically divert a mountain full of waste so i think getting creative on um how we leverage technology and how we communicate our impact is something that would be really integral especially for the gen z and the, you know the future um i think what we did try and do at bnsft is what we tried to create an online course which is you know zero waste in 30 so we looked at as all aspects of your life from your personal care routine to your home care to your kitchen your clothes 
um, cities, occupation, and we had a bunch of experts kind of share a little, um, you know, their insights, and we had a bunch of DIYs that you can do yourself. So I think empowering people to um, say that, you know, you can do it yourself. You don't need to buy this packaged product that is loaded with chemicals, packaged in plastic um, from this industry that hasn't seen innovation in the past uh, 30 odd years. And you can kind of reinvent and make whatever you can from regions that are native to your own kitchen or backyard. And you're saving money while doing that and also supporting local economy if you're sourcing your coconut oil, say from your local vendor. So I think another thing that actually this pandemic has really done for us is reflect on how we can have a decentralized approach and really like strengthen local economy. If we're self-sufficient and have everything all around us, and we want you know to have all of this dependency on uh, stuff that's perhaps ex exported from Australia or China or whatever, and thereby reduce our footprint. And so hopefully make awareness more accessible um, through our communication and through courses that basically help people visualize that they have an impact. Thank you so much, Sahel. Okay, so viewers will be taking uh, 10 more minutes of the webinar, uh, if that's okay with the panelists. Since we have a few more questions and uh, they are really nice questions which can be tackled by each of the panelists. Uh, so the next question is to Richa. There might be a more scarcity of water post COVID since right now everybody is using a lot of water for hand hygiene and since everybody is restricted to their homes, they, the consumption of water is a little bit more compared to uh, what we used to do before. So how can we overcome the future water crisis? Well, I feel like, yeah, that's a great question. And I feel the only way to overcome is, is by mending your ways. Now that you're using a lot of water, say, to wash your hands, you can probably, you know, save it in some other form. I mean, I understand it's really essential to like have like a lot of drinking water and everything, but maybe collect waters, like say I was saying from your aqua guards, collect all of the waters. And a lot of big tech parks and all of that have actually been shut down during this period. And they were a major area where water was used. So I feel that a lot of water in that sense has been saved up. And a lot of uh, other places like apartments and all had already been following uh, rainwater harvesting modules. And I think as it was mentioned previously also, that uh, it's very important that we uh, actually start taking rainwater harvesting and all these measures very seriously. We start looking at uh, not uh, disposing of like industries, they actually dispose of really all their waste into the rivers and everything. So it's very important that you maintain a certain standard. And I think all of this comes with policy changes, policy changes introduced by the government, by the BBMP, for example, in Bangalore. And I think that's a very important way to avoid because at the end of the day, we are to a very large extent depending on our natural resources of water. And now that the Ganga is also clearing up, I think it is high time that we do realize that if you do I mean, just treat your waste before releasing it into the river. We can actually use it, maybe a little more treatment in the sense of like boiling and everything, but it can still be used. So I think that's a very important way. And also for people to like mend their own waste, like maybe just like now that you aren't using your cars enough, I think people aren't using like pipes and buckets to clean their cars. So again, water is being saved there. And then uh, ACs are not being used. Used. AC uses a lot of your water. So since that is not being used, again, you're saving up water there. So in, in a way, I feel that even though for hygiene, as water is being used more, there are ways that it's being saved. And in the long run, I feel that instead of like, again, using a car, maybe use a bus for commuting. I know it's very dangerous, but buses are going to start operating at like 50% of the capacity. So if your workplace is really close by and you can take a bus or you can probably take your cycle or your you know like your bikes outside bike when I say is not the one that releases emissions so I mean I feel like these small changes can actually help you in the longer run and yeah so I feel like that's a way and I feel like policy changes in in the sense of companies actually integrating policies I think I'd, uh, Gayatri I think had mentioned about having one person focus on just the environment aspect of the company is very important to see where your water goes, to see where your waste goes and to ensure that it's used uh, responsibly. So I think that's very important in actually helping with the water crisis as we go forward as well. Thank you, Richa. Uh, 
the next question is to sanjana how can we increase productivity in this crisis during this crisis uh, thank you sanjana that's a good question so uh, i think uh, first is the evaluating your day journaling has been helping me a lot and then building the routine also it takes a certain amount of discipline you know to stick to your routine uh, that's when you'll be able to be more productive uh, and try as much to uh, keep your makeshift work workplace uh, away from the rest of the family or where most of your uh, other family events happen so that's something which can also help and uh, yeah just a quick one add more green foliage to your desk uh, that's definitely going to improve your uh, uh, focus and uh, productivity it's going to decrease your depression levels and stuff so that's also something which is helpful so i think um, also if if it's getting too tough for you to handle i think uh, having regular check ins with your team and uh, also having like a buddy system is something which can definitely help divide your day into blocks and work in those blocks and don't use technology at that time you know at least switch off your phone or put it on uh, airplane mode till you finish off a task that is something which can help uh, and also rem rem remind yourself that although we are into a lockdown it's very important that we keep our work going and uh, it's also good to adapt to this lifestyle because like i mentioned earlier this could be a norm for some time to come so it's good to adapt and i i you know during this phase i've realized that humans really adapt quickly so it's just about uh, having that little bit of uh, will uh, to uh, get over this but uh, having said that i would also uh, mention like to mention that uh, it's okay if you're not being way more productive or as much productive as you were before it's very important to listen to your bodies uh, give it enough rest when it requires if you're not in the mood it's fine uh, this will take some time to adapt but uh, once you do i think you'll start feeling better and you'll be more productive but be really patient with yourself as well as your employees and everyone around you that that's something i would like to say thank you sanjana uh, last question to gayatri uh, what tips would you give to our students who are right now under lockdown since they cannot meet their friends they cannot attend classes they have to stick to online classes the whole day so what would be uh, your suggestions to them to take care of their mental health and at the same time increase their productivity or uh, what new can they do during this pandemic during the time they have got on yeah it's such a good question again um i think i think it simply not just students i think even the rest of us who are working um there's a lot of people just going through different emotions at this time um so i think broadly try to try to um establish a schedule and see how much um you can do don't try to um stress yourself out by um you know setting very high um um goals for yourself right now not at this time because it's quite stressful already so try to make a simple schedule that you can follow then um just spend time talking to your family um there are also great apps like hangouts and zoom where you can always connect with your friends and see what they're doing check in with them once a day um text them call them um and then see how everything's going then um then try to like all i know the students are already doing a lot of courses but there's also some great documentaries and um you know some really educative tv shows that maybe you can um spend a little time catching up on or teach yourself something new i think that's such a good um good thing that's helping me um personally i've been trying to learn um trying to get more into like weight training <laughs> so i think that's been very interesting um um so like see check in with your gym trainer if they're okay with you know scheduling a zoom zoom um class where they can log in and teach a group of you you and your friends who can log in at the same time make it like a um like a routine like once a day you log in to work out and catch up and see what's happening um learn to cook because i think it's such a great life skill it saves you every single time so um yeah that's something that's been quite interesting for me um so yeah so i i guess these are some tips i just like to yeah. quickly add on to gayatri's uh, 
points. Uh, I think what uh, other thing which the students can do right now is to really, you know, take work on things hands on rather than being on screen all the time. This is the time where you can try and reuse stuff, rework stuff, refurbish stuff, uh, try to build things uh, with physical items. And, uh, you know, back, back in our childhood days when we had just two to three hours of screen time limited to that, we used to do a lot of things. Uh, uh, you know, which could be touched and felt. So I think engaging yourselves in that and also think about all the problems we have uh, right now in the world and try and come up with sustainable solutions. What you can do in your own capacity, you can start at home, but uh, I think we really need some awesome problem solvers who uh, practical, who, who can, you know, build sustainable solutions think in terms of uh, circular economy and uh, how you can reduce waste and you know reuse and keep things in the uh, uh, use for a longer time so these are some of the things which you can do i think i think over the rest thank you so much i think uh, we are moving to an end of this session and uh, i would like to say sorry to all the uh, viewers who we couldn't answer the questions they put out you all can reach out to the panelists through their uh, respective links and they'll definitely and we'll definitely revert back to you uh, answering your questions and uh, to conclude i would like to thank all our panelists for being us being with us here today and interacting with us giving out beautiful views on uh, climate change and how to uh, take care of ourselves during this uh, pandemic period and i would also uh, again want to thank our covid warriors who are fighting for us also, a big thanks to all of you who are uh, following the government guidelines and staying at homes, uh, maintaining social distancing, wearing masks. You guys are warriors too, and you guys are helping a lot in taking care of this world. Uh, thanks again to one and all. And just a small note that this world is going to be starting fresh after this pandemic, and everybody's life is going to go back to normal. But um, one thing we need to learn from this is that we need to live every moment here on and we should just enjoy our life perfectly and uh, we should just stay happy until then uh, all of us should uh, spend more time with our families video call your friends pick up a hobby which you left out or learn a new skill and in that way i think uh, we all can collectively win this battle and uh, take care of our planet at the same time and we can and we will together, I'm very sure. So that's it for, the, uh, for our first edition of Hope Schooling. We'll be doing a lot more webinars on various different themes. So we hope to see you all there again. And we hope that you all join and enjoy our webinars. Uh, so thank you so much and have an amazing day. I'm handing it over to Garvita who would like to say a few words. Thank you. Um, thank you all so, so much for tuning in um, at YWAYS. We started hope schooling with the hope of bringing more positivity. And I'm just, my heart is so full after being a part of this discussion and listening to everyone here. So thank you so much. Uh, thank you, panelists. And thank you, Sanjana. You were fabulous too. Um, as we thank all of our panelists, you were a wonderful moderator as well. Again, thank you to everyone who joined. This was successful only because of you. And uh, please stay tuned to our social media uh, accounts for a lot more uh, sessions that are coming up to bring you more positivity um, during these trying times. And we will get through this together. Thank you all again. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everybody, and have an amazing day. Good Thank job, so Why We Team. Thank you, guys. <laughs> All right. Have a good day. Bye. Bye. Bye.